morning friends today's topic is the meaning of surrender you might think what is uh, he saying about the meaning we can get the meaning in the dictionary in thesaurus wherever we find different words different meanings what is there to discuss about that and surrender we all know we often hear there was a war battle and this army surrendered to that army we all know that what is there to know about much about surrender so naturally surrender the dictionary meaning is to give oneself or a thing into the power control and possession of another commonly under compulsion so army surrenders fort is surrendering the battle some person is asked to surrender his passport you can believe the country surrender a passport you just keep the thing under the control of another person <coughs> often under compulsion so how that under compulsion can be a thing uh, for a spiritual seeker who wants to be free goal of a spiritual seeker and aspirant is freedom nothing under compulsion he not he doesn't want to be under control of anyone and surrender is that but is spiritually saying what is surrender then in a spiritual sense surrender is not just a reaching listen to someone just to give up your responsibility lord you take and you become lazy and no god knows mother knows shokali tumari chai so all your will mother uh, whatever you do that happens i need to do nothing but still um, that it is still but having all the ego for many things you will be doing yourself the things but whenever some difficult thing comes you say mm, i don't know god knows surrender is the in fact the manifestation in spiritual sense the surrender is the manifestation of indomitable energy great struggle to conquer oneself and replace our ego with god consciousness that is the purpose of surrender so surrender in the sanskrit comes from two word sharanagati sharana is you take refuge you accept someone as uh, so you get some place it's ashraya is the term from ashraya comes sharana you get a you get a refuge you get ashraya in fact means a place of rest you find a place where you really find relaxation rest free from freedom from all the problems that is the ashraya and there agati you go to that place is sharanagati you go to the place where you find real rest from all the worries and troubles and burden of your life and how do you go there you go there another word of agati is you dart there like an arrow that is shot from a bow so you go there fast sharanagati has to be done fast you just accept the thing so spiritually saying so we can explain what is spiritual surrender then surrender in the spiritual sense the first thing of spiritual surrender is faith you need to have faith it's uh, in someone whom you can surrender where you will find that person or that being can take your full responsibility and you have full faith in that person and this is surrender means faith and it is in fact praying to god surrender means prayer to god and praying to god not for anything because you have faith that god will provide you everything you need that much faith you don't need to ask god anything whatever you ask will be spiritual prayers give me purity of mind give me devotion to you like that but not the material thing give me good health give me long life uh, give me healthy body you, you need not ask that you know that whatever god wants that's what the that's what the surrender is you don't ask anything for yourself for your physical being you want all spiritual needs that you pray to god and you know that even the spiritual needs god gives you but to keep contact with god connected with god you go and in fact what will you pray otherwise when you really have so much faith developed that you don't need to pray even for a spiritual thing then you come and praise lord that lord who are you you don't need never ask even give me spiritual uh, illumination that also you know that god will do so that gradually you have so much faith in god that god is going to do everything that is needed for you in this life in after life god has taken every care of you but that faith comes with gradually with add come closer and closer to god so the next point is 
the surrender is coming closer to God. You find God, uh, you have become very close to Him. You, you are aware of uh, God's doing through you. You feel that God is working through you. You feel that God is working in the world through other persons. The, you have become, uh, God becomes a sort of reality to you. It's, a, it's not, some, not something that uh, just have only, uh, you have to impose upon yourself, yes, that there is God. But God, you have become so closer to God that God is an entity, God is a reality. God is working through, in the universe, through every being, through everything. One Sri Ramakrishna, one dog was approaching to Sri Ramakrishna and Dakshineshwar and he did, said to his disciples, let me see if God wants, to, mother wants to speak something uh, through this dog. Someone was, dog, God will speak through dog? Yes, that is how God speaks. One who has faith in God and has come so close to God will see God in everything. That's why people who are illumined, they can see nothing but God. In everything that we see, bad, evil, even there they will see all goodness, this bright, there is no darkness in there. They have already carried from darkness to light that Abhijit was saying the prayer that they were used to do. So we become the taught in Varanagar Math that led us from darkness to light. So they see already light, there is no darkness. Everywhere there is light of God, divinity that is shining through every heart, through every being. So that closeness will make us surrender. So surrender makes a spiritual sense. I'm coming closer to God. Another is losing the right to handle yourself. When you totally surrender to God, you really don't worry what you should do. That's what uh, in the scripture it is said, even the foxes have holes and birds have nests, but uh, the son of Man doesn't have any place to stay. Totally depend, nothing to think for tomorrow. So they don't think anything for tomorrow, anything for tomorrow. God takes every care. So that must you don't you don't need to handle any anything for yourself. You lose totally give um, right to handle yourself is totally resigned in the hands of God. That's what is certain asked for as being surrendered. So Sri Krishna said in the Gita. Uh, the, the verse that was translated in the reading is Mat karma krit mat paramo mat bhakta sangha vardita We work everything for myself, my sake Mat karma krit and be totally devoted to me Mat paramo, think me to be the highest Mat karma krit mat paramo mat bhakta sangha vardita Be my devotee and be free from attachment Sangha vardita Attachment expectation from the world and getting attached to things you like, that is the cause when you will fail to surrender to me because you like something else. They say God is jealous God. He doesn't want anything else to be loved. He wants the whole, whole heart love to be given to Him. And when we could do this, then He reveals that He has become all. So not divided love. The love to the world will go through love to God. We start loving God, bringing totally our mind and heart and soul from the world, all attachment, Sangha, Varjita, and then we give that heart to God, then, then God is not just your idea, it just becomes manifested at this world. Then this unmanifested God who is not seen formless, where he sits, we don't know, but that becomes visible and manifest in the world. And that love, God doesn't take. God shows, I have become all this. So this whole love, world becomes the recipient of your torrent of your love that was flowing through your heart, which you had earlier curtailed from attachment to the things. Sangha Varjita. Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu. Another quality is what you have to become to surrender. Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu. Treat no one as your enemy, he says. Don't have dislike for anyone. Don't have hatred for anyone. Sarva Bhuteshu. Don't hate anything. Any being. Like um, even the um, ferocious things, even abominable uh, worms. Don't hate. Don't feel enmity. 
you may have to protect yourself, you may you will not allow uh, spiders to be in your house, you will try to remove them, but there should not be hatred. There should not be a feeling of enmity. Oh, here is a spider, I have to kill him. No anger like that. A little feeling of sorrow that I have to remove that to survive that much of a selfishness that I have to practice being having born in a body and having that much of ego. I have to remove you. The ant is coming, the worm is coming, I have to remove you. But there is no anger or hatred towards anyone. Nirvaila sarva bhuteshu. When we can do that, then what will happen? Then, yasa mameti pandava. Pandava, oh Arjuna, one who can do that, he will come to me. Ma eti. Ma means to me. Eti means will come. That we say, Sarana Agati. It will dart. He will come forth if you can have that much. No attachment to anything. No enmity to, enmity to uh, any other being. And devotion to me. Working for my sake. If you can do that, you are sure to come to me. You have already started. If you have started practicing that, First step, you have come first step towards me. That is what the Saranagati is. Another Sri Krishna says, Sarva Dharman Parityaja Mamekam Saranam Braja. You give up all your duties, don't think for anything, all your responsibilities, give up that. And Sarva Dharman Parityaja, then what to do? I have given up all responsibilities, then what to do? Maam ekam saranam braja. You come saranam, that's surrender to me, braja. You come to me as only one goal. Maam ekam saranam braja. But what about my responsibilities? What will happen to this? Can won't I incur sin? Aham tuam sarva pape pyo mokche shyami. I will free you from all sins. Whatever sin will incur, I will free you from that. Maasucha, don't worry. Don't be scared. So, when we could do that, to consider God as our own being and God the one love of, of, of us, then in fact, you don't have to give up your uh, the worldly responsibility. You start seeing God, Krishna there, then you come mat karma krim, mat paramo, mat bhakta sangavarja. What you serve to your husband, to your wife, to your workplace, what you do, you do for the sake of God. You are thinking that I am worshipping Krishna. I am working this for the Krishna. The customer comes to you, Krishna came in this form. And I need to make please that person. Not like treating a human being as uh, my TD Canada trust says you have to smile, you have to say good morning, you have to say how do you do. Not like that, a great fashion. It will be God coming to you and you will be doing automatically where the training goes away. You see, when you say how how are you today and you smile and you feel that God has come to you, your behavior will be just different. There will be so natural attraction, so natural um, feeling for that person will feel good and you will feel that I am with God. Your colleague beside is God, the front customer is God, the back home your relatives are God. That is what Mat Karma Kriya. That has to come and that will come when we have love and surrender to God. That is the one thing that surrender means. Jesus also said, come to me, come to me all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Then what will happen? I will rest you. He will become our rest. It's not that He will give us rest. He will give, make us rest in Him. So it's something more than something you give and you may lose. You, the rest becomes integral part of you. He doesn't say, I will give you rest. He says, I will rest you. And who will come to Him? Who are heavy laden and who labor. Who are tired. Who are not finding the way in this world. All this said, all this tried. Still, I don't find joy in seeing a person in front of me. My anger doesn't go. My doubt doesn't go. How, how, to, how to clear myself? How to conquer my lower nature? How to conquer anger? How to have the ill feeling towards someone who does little wrong to me? I suffer because of that. Those are the people who are heavy laden, weary of life. Jesus says, come to me. Come to God. Come to divinity. Where are you find God? I am sitting in your heart. Kingdom of heaven is within the heart, within every heart. So there is God sitting in you. Come to me and everything will be set all right. Another quality of this 
spiritual surrender is endurance. When we surrender spiritually, we will be practicing endurance. There will be, you will be able to stand any difficulty, any adversity that comes in life. There are many means how to handle the difficulties in life. There are many big thoughts, but you will be able to handle that. One is, you know that your everything is taken care of by God. So, God will take care of this and this difficulty will also pass. As Holy Mother taught, don't be afraid of any problem that comes to your life. Any sort of problem, you'll find all problems go away in time. They come in time, they go away in time. And she gives the example like water running through under the breeze. Huge water coming, but you are standing on the bridge. If you are standing on the bridge, water will run under the bridge. If you are standing right on the water in the river, then you may be swept away. That standing on the bridge is surrendering to God, holding on to God, resting on God. Then problems, they seem to come in and they go away. You are not afraid. You can endure anything. Shankaracharya said, this endurance comes in the Gita also. Sahanam Sarvadukhanam apratikara purvakam Chinta vilaparahitam sat tikshani gandhatein viveka chudamani So, what is that? All things can be endured without any complaint. Not that you will complain. Once Rabia, a great Sufi saint, Muslim saint, uh, he was, she was having a terrible headache. And she tied her head with um, cloth because she, want, I mean, she couldn't do anything, terrible headache. There was another Sufi saint, and when he, she saw, he saw Rabia, uh, he said, why have you done that? So I'm feeling tremendous, uh, tremendous headache today, it's just um, throbbing. He said, oh, you are protest protesting against God that he gave you headache. What about when God gives you uh, so many days when you don't have headache, a very wonderful time? And today he is giving that, you are protesting against God that he has given you headache. So that much of taking care also is not required. Headache, endure that. Don't say anything against God. Whatever comes from God, you just accept it. That's what is called endurance. With, if we love, if we love God and we know that God, everything comes, good or bad, everything comes from God and we have faith that God loves us, then nothing can bother when someone is there who loves us tremendously and he gives something that seems to be a little difficult, you can just, that love can just wash away your all difficulties that come to you. Just this faith that God loves me dearly. God really loves us dearly. Otherwise, why he has brought us to this, to this world? Why he has given this his life? Why he has given this human body? Why he has given, uh, given us this thinking intellect? That is all because of God's love for us. Only we are not able to recognize, understand, feel how much God loves us. Aurobindo used to say, God loves you much more than what you can love yourself. We think we love ourselves. But God loves us more than that. God's love can be compared only mother's love for her child. Even they say, that is also just a worldly example example because there is no other worldly example of a love in the world. Unselfish love is only mother's love for the child. But that love also falls short of God's love for human beings. Tremendous love God has for us. So with that loving being, giving something doesn't matter. It's like a um, mother um, not giving me chocolate. I want chocolate, mother give me chocolate. No, take it. And mother keeps it safe under the lock and key. The son might say, how this cruel is mother, she is not giving me this, I want to have this. But why mother has given that? She will give in another time. It is too much now you are having. It will do your harm to your body. So maybe like that, God gives something. There must be some reason. There must be some teaching. There must be some this. But all that has come because of love of God. If you have that feeling, you can endure any problem. Sahanam Sarvadukhanam. Sarvadukhanam. All difficulties. Then in, in surrender, there is a lot of struggle, as I said in the beginning. There is a struggle to be free. And that struggle is to be with God. Always. I don't want to forget God. 
that is the surrender comes. When you totally surrender, you will be always thinking of God. We will come see some examples um, in the life of Yudhish Ghosh, how uh, this struggle for being with God will be there. So struggle to be with God, struggle to be like God. We have some idea, God we have not seen. But we have seen God manifested in the world. We have seen God's form that is described in the scriptures. The best way is to understand God, Swami Vivekananda says, is to see this glorious person and like Jesus, Ramakrishna, Chaitanya, Buddha, all these manifested beings or prophets like Shankara, like um, Muhammad, like uh, Guru Nanak, Jarathustra, all these beings, they have so much of God's quality manifested through them. Swami Vivekananda says, whatever concept of God that we have, that falls short seeing the personality and life of these great avatars and prophets. So thinking of your Ishta and trying to become like him, just think of Sri Ramakrishna whom you love most of you. Uh, like how much of truthfulness he has, what truthfulness you can think of, of in God, how much of love you can think of in God, what Sri Ramakrishna manifests the love. Uh, it's tremendous, it's unthinkable. So by thinking Sri Ramakrishna, they will say, oh, God loves us so much. So you have to have concrete example, and that example you find in the man gods, that avatara, that prophets, tremendous love, tremendous renunciation, tremendous truthfulness. That's what you find in the God. And to be like him. I want to love all like Sri Ramakrishna loved. I want to adhere to truth as Sri Ramakrishna did. I want to be as forgiving as Sri Ramakrishna did. It's like trying to become like him, trying to be close to him. That is what the struggle to become like him is surrender. That itself is surrender. Surrender also says not complaining. No complaint. You accept that's what endurance, enduring we are talking and that's what uh, it says. Whatever the world is, accept is as it is. Don't always complain for smaller things. Oh, that person uh, told this thing to me. That person didn't treat me well. No honor was given to me. I was not welcome. They didn't say you thank you for my doing this. All the time we are complaining for smaller things and filling ourselves with all the things and going away from the surrender. When we do not surrender, how will we reach that place of peace and that, that's what uh, we said, um, of ultimate peace, param, shantim, um, and sashwata padam. That we cannot get without that. That's why we pray, and the prayer that we adopted from Holy Mother, uh, and was composed by Swami Sarvagatanandi, most probably, may we not accuse, demand, or complain. That is one of the greatest surrender, spiritual surrender. If you could practice, no accusation, demanding and complaining for anything. When you don't demand, you are not expecting. It's a great quality. You don't expect anything from the world. Then you don't become, you don't complain also. We complain because we expect. We expect from everyone. And Swami Vivekananda says, you expect love from people, you expect good words from people, and like a, with a begging ball, you go to the people, give me love, give me your good words, give me praise. And you all do that, and when you don't get that thing, even on your ball, begging ball, you feel shocked, you feel bad. Who is responsible? It is you. You are a beggar. Don't beg anything from this world. I don't beg anything from this world. Good comes, welcome. Bad comes, welcome again. Because I am a child of God. God, I have God God. I am not going to fall down. God will take care. Nothing bad will happen to me. That what comes power with the surrender. Surrender gives tremendous power. What to surrender? Surrendering self-interest. Nothing for me. I don't have anything I want. I know you will take every, every care of me. Total uh, surrender of self-interest. Surrendering expectation from anyone. We are always prone to expect from our closest friend, from our relatives, from our colleagues, from everything we expect something. How, if we don't expect them, how the things will run? You, you uh, expect your son to do good. You expect uh, your friend to speak with you, you uh, nicely. But even don't expect that. They will do by themselves. 
whatever they can do but don't expect your son to be, has to become a doctor or lawyer or your uh, friend has to be very sweet and praiseworthy for you don't expect anything because you expect means you are inviting trouble for you you are going away from god you are losing points in self in surrender to god you are becoming less spiritual and with that you are inviting a difficulty in your life what is anxiety sadness frustration this all will come and who is responsible you and your expectation don't expect anything world is created not all good not all bad world is always a mixer there will be people someone will say you good someone will not say you good but that's always there friend will today say we are very good and tomorrow he will uh, complain somewhere oh that i expected him to be and if that friend will come your that friend was saying all against you don't expect anything that's what Swami Vivekananda's father had taught Swami Vivekananda when I was not don't expect anything from the world that is the great teaching of self surrender to god then what to surrender all your burden all your burden in life give to god mahatma gandhi when he was having this great freedom struggle He said, oh, "So many problems, so many talks. Sometimes his movement failing. Sometimes talks with the, um, the authorities in England. All so such a burden he was taking for the for the for the country. So what? While sleeping, they say he said, 'All my burden I put at the feet of Sri Krishna. I am free from burden.' And he used to sleep nicely at night, whatever little time he slept, very little he slept, but." He was free from that. He knew that Sri Krishna will do some higher power will do some. There was faith that this would be done. That was there. So surrender all your burden to God. They say when we carry our burden of responsibilities, oh, I have to look after my my son. I have to look after my wife. That thing. What will happen if I die? Don't think everything God does. You don't do anything. If we say I do this thing, that is mistake. That mistake has will bring its ill effect to you. God looks after everyone. We don't look after anyone. God will take care of everyone. If you have to die, the world will go like that. Your son will be becoming very nice as he as he was destined to be. Everything will go on well. Don't ever think if if I die, what will happen tomorrow to my child, to my wife, to my husband, to my relative? What will happen? World goes on. So lay all your burden, worries to God. Let Him take care. You pray, can pray to God, Lord. Please look after. They are yours. They are not mine. To say that they belong to me is itself a mistake. They all belong to you. By your grace, you have given me them, and we live together. And you have been such a wonderful company. And I am very grateful to you, Lord, for giving me such a nice son, good daughter, such a wonderful husband, such a very nice wife. So like that, you just be grateful for some people that have come to you by God's grace, and God is taking care of you. They say in a train, one person went and uh, he was carrying a suitcase, heavy suitcase. And the uh, train was moving. That person was standing, and he was having holding that suitcase in his hand. Someone said, "Why, why you don't keep suitcase down?" He said, "No, I want to carry it where I'm going. The suitcase will be carried by the train itself. Put down there. Train is moving. You are moving. Suitcase will be moving in the train. But he wants to carry that load in in his hand. So we are full like that when we." Carry your burden with us, and, um, and God is carrying everything. He is taking every care. So we need not be foolish like that person carrying the burden. All the burden is surrendered to God. And what is the very difficult thing to surrender is ego. Ego is I sense. I am doing this. I have achieved this. I. So this possess. I possess this. Someone said. Mm, I have to. I have so many possessions. I want to get rid of possessions. This is not good. You have to surrender. Give up all possessions. That is not real surrender. You have uh, some extra thing. You want to give that salvation army. That is not the real surrender. Real giving up. Instead of giving giving up my possession, let us give up less. Just give up mine. That thing possession that belongs to you. That give up that mine and I. That itself is. Great renunciation of ego, and what we need to give up 
we need to give up lethargy and laziness. Again, self-surrender doesn't mean God will take care of me. Oh, we, everything runs by God and I won't do anything. I won't do any spiritual practice. I won't um, um, do anything nice way. So, going into tamas is not the self-surrender. Becoming, having rajas, having and promoting yourself to sattva, sattvika. That is the real self-surrender. So, we have to give up lethargy and laziness. Whom to surrender? To one whom you trust, really, that person, that being can take my charge, that whom, whom, to that person you can surrender. To whom to surrender? To whom you love extremely, whom you trust and also love extremely. To him alone you can give every responsibility to that person, to that being. And whom you feel is capable of taking your burden. People, one person was going, Holy Mother's life, uh, he asked one of her uh, devotees to bring something carrying, there was no uh, vehicle at that time in the village, they had to carry on their head. And uh, she had asked to bring some uh, vegetables from a nearby place, that person carried more than what she, you know, it was needed and the, the weight burden became very heavy. So he was carrying, after some time it became so heavy and it took quite a few miles to walk, about four or six miles. So while he was walking, after some time it became so heavy that his head started aching, his neck started having pain and uh, he was still carrying and at last he said, Mother, I cannot carry anymore and there was time he had to reach there. She had to cook, people had come from uh, other places. Mother, I cannot do it now anymore. Maat parchine, I can't do anymore. As soon as that person said that, suddenly he felt he can walk now, weight has become less. And he came to Jairambati and he said this incident. Then some person asked, when did you uh, pray like that? He said, that time, about uh, one hour ago. He said, oh, that time. I saw Holy Mother was walking there in Jairambati, putting his hand like this and running and sweating and walking like that, running that. All burden was taken physically by Holy Mother. That's how they put, carry our burden. That's here, Holy Mother, this Divine Mother take the burden of whole universe. So that is nothing. Just is to show and assure us that we can take your burden, every burden. She used to give initiation and was seen doing japa. Somebody said, Mother, why are you doing japa? You are realized so you don't have to do japa. My child, there are many persons who have taken initiation and they can't have time to have to do japa. So I do for them. So much of taking burden, you see, these people, these spiritual persons, Holy Mother, Sri Ramakrishna, always they are ready to take burden. And those few examples, just for showing that we are ready here for you. Come to me. Give your all the troubles. We will, I will take it. And also, we surrender whom we feel can really guide us and give us what we really seek in the very depth of our heart. So, real teacher. Why to surrender? Because surrender alone can give us freedom. Total surrender is total freedom. When you, when you totally surrender to God for everything, Sarvat Harman Parindyate, you are free from all burden and worries and anxieties. He is going to take care. Jnani also surrenders, Bhakta also surrenders. Jnani, how does Jnani surrender? Jnani negates and casts off ego. He just says, I am not uh, this body, I am not this mind. He just always says, whatever I does, he wants to negate always, not this, not this, not this. And finally he casts off that ego. What does Bhakta does? Bhakta approaches and becomes absorbed. Bhakta, instead of trying to deny himself for ego and trying to see that everything that sees is not I, he just approaches God. God, you are mine. I, you take my responsibility. And slowly he comes closer and closer to God and gets absorbed to God. He becomes one with God. That's what Sri Ramakrishna said, turning unripe eye into a ripe eye. I the doer, I the achiever, I the dispersion, I the doctorate. Like that, to say the ripe eye, I the friend, I a devotee, I a mm, compassionate person. I a good father, I a non-attached person, I a devotee of God. This becomes ripe eye, sweet eye, 
very friendly eye and earlier eye is very uh, raw eye. So turning unripe eye into ripe eye, that can be, that will be done by surrender. As Sri Krishna, uh, Jesus said, I will rest you. We will find a rest by surrender. We are weary, we are heavy laden, we are tired. So we need a place to rest and it is promised. Not someone um, promises and forgets. It is promised by someone who will never forget what he promised. It is promised by Jesus, promised by God himself when he came in the form of human being. I will rest you. Come to me. Um, who does that will come to me. Sri Krishna promises. Sri Ramakrishna promises. Holy Mother promises. Like that. And Yasa Mamiti, Sarva Pape Pyo Mokchesha will be freed from all sins. We will reach the ultimate uh, place where we want to go. Tat prasadat param shantim sthanam prapsisi shasvatam. Eternal abode and, eter and complete absolute peace will be there if we could surrender. So these are the rewards for surrendering ourselves. What do we need to, to surrender? We need to love God. Without love, surrender will not come. Uh, for our behavior in the world, we need not judge others. The people behave as God has made, as Prakriti has made. Don't judge others, don't try to find defects in others. Accept the world as it is. Try to accept it. Don't try to um, change uh, the place where you cannot change. And have absolute faith in God. We find the examples of surrender in Arjuna. Arjuna, when Sri Krishna said, you fight, Arjuna was saying, why to fight? Why to kill my kids, kids and kin? I want to become a mendicant. I want to live in arms begging. Sri Krishna taught him that you cannot do, be happy with that way. That you are trying to flee. This is not in your bone. That's not your uh, makeup. That's not your disposition. You are a Kshatriya. You want to fight. You want to fight for righteousness. You should fight. And finally, after long conversation, Sri Krishna, this Arjuna had trust in Sri Krishna and said, Shadi Maam Tvam Prapannam, I surrender to you. Then he said, whatever you say, Karishyami, Vajanam Tava, whatever you say, Sri Krishna, I will follow you. Total surrender comes, and total trust comes in Sri Krishna. After that he shoots and he conquers Arjuna, the great warrior. And there is for, surrender has to have extreme love. With surrender comes. Pranada, he used to take the name of God. He, when he was in womb, somehow he heard the name of God from Narada. And that he got after his birth also. Being born in an Asura family who didn't believe in God, he had so much of love for God and ultimately so much of surrender of himself and his, uh, all, um, his protection to God that he knew that nothing is going to happen bad to him. The people wanted to kill him, burn him, throw him. Nothing. He knew that he is not going to happen. How this happened? How this faith came? It came out of extreme love for God. Also, surrender can come only when we have feeling of helplessness. I cannot do any more. Mother, now I cannot carry. Mother carries. Mother, I find no way. How can I control my anger? Lord will show you the way. Just you need to remember Lord. Lord is over the way, how we can control your anger, your grief. All those will go if we surrender to God and pray to Him. I cannot do that. If still I see the things, I feel like grabbing, I feel like hoarding, I feel like eating. What is this greed in me? Please make this. I am growing old. Now I should be free from all those vices. So God will help in that. So in that way also, like Giddish goes, Sri Ramakrishna said, Meditate in the morning and evening. Girishma said, I cannot do that. Where I am in the morning, I don't know. My habits are not that um, controlled. Oh, you cannot do that. So you remember, um, while you sleep, at least you, you do japa at the evening. Oh, you don't know, Thakur, where I sleep, what time I sleep, where I sleep, I don't know at all. So that is also impossible. That you cannot do. Then um, just remember me when you go to sleep. Oh, I don't understand. But, drinking person. So I drink and I fall asleep. I cannot promise that. He was very sincere though. Girish goes, might have all the vices. You are very sincere and truthful. He told everything. Then Sri Ramakrishna said, can you give all your um, attorney to me, all your power to me? Yes, you take on my behalf, whatever has to be done. That he gave. 
that totally surrendered his attorney to Sri Ramakrishna. All spiritual practices, you just do your power. Whatever I do, you are my like, uh, I'm like a child, you are my attorney. So he said that. And after that, Giri's ghost transformation is not eaten from anyone. Total surrender to Sri Ramakrishna and felt himself helpless, he cannot do anything. And there was great transformation. Gave up drinking, gave up vices, become like a saint. Swami Vivekananda dressed him as Shiva. And he used to preach. He said, You are Bhairava. Tremendous transformation in the life of Greece because of this surrender by a feeling of, I cannot do, you have to do. And with that came a lot of responsibility though. Once you are saying, Oh, I will do that. Sri so Ramakrishna was there. Girish, you cannot do that. You cannot say that, that you are going to do. You have given all your attorney to me, your God. And you can say, if God wills, I will do that. God willing, inshallah, great word. You don't do a commit anything. That just you want to crush your ego. There is nothing that I can do. Unless God wills, I cannot do. So that is a great prayer, a great word, and a great word of surrender. Swami Vivekananda, we know how first he doubted Sri Ramakrishna, all the things he had loved for Sri Ramakrishna, but later on how much he surrendered, and then went to Pavari Baba to take initiation, and all that went in his life, all the faith, and then how much he surrendered to Sri Ramakrishna, that he felt that everything that he does is not done by him, it is all done by Sri Ramakrishna. He experiences this thing and writes back to India to his brother Manz, that uh, you, you think I am writing this letter? Someone is holding my hand and writing. He, his hand was held by someone, his mind was held by someone, his intellect was held by someone. He, there was all Sri Ramakrishna in him. And he writes beautiful prayer, the Sri Ramakrishna is Totram. You are Om Rim Ritam. You are the absolute Brahman, you are the creator um, Shakti and you are the law of the nature. But I am in the delusion. Mohan Kasan, Bahukritam. All these do, but still I don't. I don't worship you, O Lord. Tasma tameva saranam mama dina bandho. Therefore, as I cannot hold on to you, I totally surrender myself to you. O thou, the friend of lowly, the friend of weak, the friend of helpless, dina bandho. That's how the God is described. Those who cannot do by themselves, they have God with them. And who is that? Those who have no ego. We, if we renounce the ego and surrender to God, He will do everything. Then she said, Bhaktro trito hidaye name bhati I know that you are so great, you can do everything, you have tremendous power. I also from my mouth, but still I don't feel in my heart. That's where is that real experience of what I speak through my mouth. Therefore, O oh Lord, O oh friend of the lowly, O oh friend of the weak, you are my refuse. Like that, Swami Vivekananda wrote that is total, that is sung every day in Virguru and other centers of Ramakrishna mission for prayer, for surrendering to God. And when we say, Lord, you take care, I can't do. Mother, I can't bear any more than Mother bears, than God bears. The more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves will become. Our ego is not we. The God's quality is we. The more ego goes, the cover of ego goes, the more God manifests, the more we become what we really are. True surrender is when we say, Lord, if the problem, pain, sickness or situation is needed to fulfill your purpose and glory in my life or another's, please don't take it away. So. Make me an instrument in the inner work in this world, giving me trouble, putting me in test, making me work hard, but make me feel that I work for you. As Brother Lawrence said, I cannot work anything without thinking of God. Was since played in the monastery, always feels that he does it for the happiness of God, for the pleasure of God. He said that even if I pick up a straw from the ground, I do it for the pleasure of God, for love of God. Every step he walks, he feels it is for the joy of God. So that was the surrender that Brother Lawrence had. 
So, one person wrote, I strongly encourage you to surrender to God's grace, love and wisdom from today itself. So, I also pray in that way, let us have our total surrender to the will of God and we feel that's it.